just come in. Being in healthcare for 30 some odd years now, there are a few jobs and patients over that time that stand out as particularly striking sort of cases that you'll never forget. This will definitely go down as one of them. Even if you know you're going to work in the pre-hospital environment, you know that you're going to go out and see sick patients. There are some patients that you just, you can never prepare yourself for and emotionally it's, it's actually very difficult sometimes. I was an observer working with the doctor and the paramedic. I was just shocked. It was something that I wasn't expecting. Hello Airbase. Hi Tony. Okay, yeah, pass details. Another one's just come in. Um, okay. We've got a possible dead child, severe traumatic injuries. Sorry. Uh, okay, okay, cool. We're calling lifting. Thanks. The first thing that went through my mind, particularly when I heard the mechanism of injury, was not again, because it was only just over a month since, since the last similar call I had. I talked to Mike as we were putting our helmets on and told him that I'd never seen anything like that before. I was quite nervous, to be honest. I think any incident that involves a child is, is hugely stressful. The language that she used was dead child opposed to something like traumatic cardiac arrest. And the adrenaline just goes up. on the most serious jobs. Each one of these jobs can test you to your limits. And you rehearse in your head, sometimes several times before you get there, some of the procedures you might have to do. We know that this was a very young child as well, which adds additional pressure. The most time critical of any patient that we will ever have. You want to get to the patient as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, the child couldn't be revived. People recognize a very sick child when they see one. The impact that it has on all those that respond uh, can be pretty, is pretty notable. Unless you deal with that and come to terms with it uh, and process it in a healthy way, it will inevitably end up impacting your life and those around you. When we got back to base, I felt it was really important for all of us to sit down and try and debrief this incident. It's not something we usually do as medical students, but I think I really needed it at the time. I think there's a learning side, but I also really feel that there's a well-being pastoral type side. That's right. So start from the beginning, so job came in. And it's also the time to start the preparations for what might come next, the beginning of that sort of process of, of getting through these bad jobs. I think that really hit me hard the way that it was passed. Um, Just before we were leaving, I got Mike uh, and asked him, what do I do now? What does anyone do really af after that? What do you do on that night? I think when you go home, everybody handles it differently. I recognize some of the things that he may face, you know, potentially having memories come back or intrusive thoughts or even flashbacks. Okay, oxygen in there. Suction. I will check. Suction. All right, let's go. I think one of the most important things is to let people know what normal is, letting them know that's normal and it gets better over time. And I think that's one of the most worrisome things to people when they first experience this, that they don't expect that. During the actual incident, I think there was so many things that needed to be done 
I don't think I necessarily had time for all of that, that emotion. I thought about it a lot, actually, after the day that it occurred. The scene itself was very visually distressing, um, and it, it was, it was horrible to see. I had some dreams, I suppose, nightmares, or however you want to word them. Alright, Tony, let's uh, set up for a cold two and uh, keep doing CPR. Matt, can you get the clothes off, please? Roger. And then we need an eye open. Have they crushed checklist? Yeah, suction. You should hold on to the cheek for me. Okay, leave him connected. Ventilate. Some of them were, were months later, and rather than saying to my family who were all around, I'm just, you know, finding this a little bit difficult, I just kind of held it in. I thought about it a lot in the week after, when I was in the supermarket, seeing other children would remind me of it. And when it does come back, sometimes it's overwhelming. That was, would have been quite a scary thing had Mike not told me that it was normal and that it wasn't something to be worried about and he experienced it too. So a few months after the job, because I was still on occasion thinking about it and having the odd sort of experience where it come back, I thought I should just drop Matt a text and see how he's doing. Providing the opportunity to talk about this if he wanted to. I think because we move between lots of different teams, Often we can just slip through the net, especially for medical students such as myself, where we don't know if what we're experiencing is normal, and we also don't really know who to talk to either. And actually, the week that Mike had texted me, I had been thinking about it quite a lot. Though the thoughts became less, sometimes I would just be surprised. When I was with my nieces at Christmas, we'd just be doing something and they would be messing around and then suddenly that thought would come back to me. Keeps doing CPR. And I'd be right back there in the situation. Matt, can you get the clothes off, please? All right, let's uh, set up for a call to, can we get an eye open, please? Check. Suction. Check. Bougie. What about that child? When you're in the home of the patient and you can see the relatives, you can see exactly whose child they are and how devastated the family is to, to be in this situation. To be able to share my experience with Mike made me feel less alone. We have to share and talk about these and that if you aren't impacted by the death of a child, especially as a healthcare worker, are you really the type of person who cares and, and should be in this job because you're not human if this doesn't bother you. Here at Essex and Hearts Air Ambulance, I think we are a very open organisation and I think we are good at talking to each other about our feelings. But I think sometimes you just hold these things in. But actually that meant that I just became a bit more anxious. I was trying to cover it up almost um, and that was a bit, of a, a bit of a mistake on my behalf. I think there is always this feeling that, you know, you don't talk about these things or people feeling that if you experience this, that you're weak or vulnerable, so people man up or be macho and don't want to ever talk about these issues. From the outside, a lot of times it looks like people who deal with all this can just walk away and, and not be bothered by it. You just see them smiling and you don't really know what's below the surface. So the Minds Matter conference was really aimed at highlighting some of the psychological impacts of trauma both on patients as well as on providers and responders. And that's really all we're going to tell you about the case. And this is a little bit unusual uh, in that typically we focus on the clinical side of things, but the case this time is actually us. I didn't really talk to anyone about my feelings and emotions for, for months actually in, until it came up at the Minds Matter conference. And that's the first time I spoke to both Tony and Matt again. We started discussing our experiences and I was actually really surprised. And it was only then that I realised that Mike and Matt had been feeling some of the very similar emotions that I'd had. Some of them had had flashbacks, times where they felt quite emotional. But actually we'd never, we never spoke about it to each other. We'd, we'd just kind of carried on as it were. And if we'd have just bridged the gap together, then it would have been a lot of comfort to both of us. 
It was really useful to see that there were other more experienced clinicians, people who were excellent at their jobs, also struggling with these kind of emotions and experiencing the same things. Sharing that with others, particularly junior doctors, medical students and training paramedics is really important. The education that Mike gave me early on was completely invaluable because through the entire period of remembering the event, I felt like that was all very normal and I didn't feel isolated. All of these things, the anxieties, the flashbacks, sometimes not being able to sleep, etc., that they're all a completely normal response to a terrible and tragic incident. We're finally coming to terms with the understanding of the impact that it has. Every contact leaves a trace. A lot of people are experiencing difficulties, but it's just talking about it that's going to make all of the difference. Share your feelings and emotions in the weeks, months, and even longer following the incident. And if you're struggling, if you're finding things different, talk to your colleagues, talk to your peers, talk to your family, talk to your friends. and They will listen and they will help you.